very warm welcome to Heston Nation United Reformed Church morning service. Let us worship the living God. In the beginning of our worship, I'm going to read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Loving God, Heavenly Father, King of the Kings, Almighty God, we give you honor and praise. We worship you, we adore you, especially today, Heavenly Father, when we are celebrating the day of Pentecost. Heavenly Father, we ask your anointing, your power for your people. Please help us that we may glorify your name. We give you thanks for the peaceful night and for this wonderful day, for the brightness of this day. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the fellowship of the believers. Almighty God, help us that we may glorify your name in this place and the people, those who are worshipping with us through social media, please be with them and bless them. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. In the beginning of our worship, we are going to sing, I will enter his gifts. So, uh, we can use the books if there is a problem with the, the screen, I think. <clears throat> you got this uh, mission praise in your hand. So let's give him praise. Okay. Meanwhile, quiet and rotating. Quiet, 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 please come forward. Number 97. So it is. Number 97. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. Let us give him praise. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. I will take his different aid and the Lord has me. I will join for me and make me glad. He has made me glad. Thank you. 
Let us pray. It's a prayer of uh, thanksgiving and uh, confession. It is good to confess our sins in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ because He is always ready to forgive our sins. That's His grace, His mercy we are enjoying in this life. Let us give thanks for His presence among His people. Give Him thanks for this place of worship where we can worship Him freely. We can enjoy His fellowship. We can enjoy the fellowship with the believers. Give Him thanks for our families, our loved ones, those who are near and far. Give Him thanks for His Holy Spirit. As today we are remembering the day of Pentecost, when the people of God empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need to give Him thanks for His gift, which is beyond our understanding. The grace of God, the mercy of God, we need to give him thanks for his crucifixion, for his precious blood. He shed that blood on the cross. As we are coming to this table, we are celebrating the feast of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. We are partaking in this Holy Communion. We need to give him thanks for this table. We today give thanks to God for our Queen as she has celebrated her jubilee and today people are celebrating with her. May God bless her. May God bless this country. Let us give in praise the freedom we are enjoying in this place, in this country. We need to confess our sins in the presence of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all the thanks. You are the sustainer, you are the redeemer. We give you thanks for this beautiful country. Heavenly Father, for your people and especially for our Queen and her household. We give you thanks each and every moment you have given our Queen. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his subordinates, his cabinet members. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this place of worship and the churches, those who are worshiping in our neighborhood, near and far. Please be with them. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our children, our loved ones. Heavenly Father, please protect them and bless them. Loving God, we come to you with a thankful heart for your sacrifice, for redemption, atonement for this bread and wine, for your table as we are coming to this table as a family. Please be with us and give us a thankful heart. We confess our sins in your presence. Please forgive us and renew our mind and heart. Be with your people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. We continue our worship and uh, we are going to sing this in be still for the presence of the Lord. It will be on the screen. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Thank you very much, and Rocky, for fixing this problem. Thank you. <coughs> this is a um, no, this is a fire, a morning change, a morning change, sorry. Yeah, that's, thank you. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you for this beautiful choir. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
for his wonderful promise. He made his promise with his uh, disciples and he fulfilled that disciple with the, that promise to his disciples as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So I'll request Sharon, please pray for the gift of God and for his people, those who are enjoying this great blessing on this earth as we're moving towards the heavenly kingdom. We need to give him thanks that he empowered us with his Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Loving and gracious Lord, my Lord, yes, Jesus, Jesus Lord, 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 Almighty mm -hmm. Father, Lord, we thank you for giving Lord, us this great privilege to worship your mighty name in your presence, Lord. Lord, thank you for all helping all of us to come here, though we attended online or in person, Lord. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship your name in your presence, to hear your word, Lord Jesus, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for the great sacrifice you have done for us, Lord Jesus, Lord. You humbled yourself onto the cross just for us, Lord, Lord. Lord, you, you were ashamed, Lord, you were put to shame, Lord, yet you remain silent, though you're so holy and you're so pure, Lord. Yet you remain silent, Lord Amen. Jesus, Lord. Amen. You took upon the pain onto yourself that we're supposed to be in that position, Please. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord. We're meant to take on that pain, Lord. We're meant to go through that pain, Lord. Yet, yet you showed your love and your grace upon us, Lord, and you loved us so much that you didn't want us to go through that, Lord Jesus, Lord. And you rose again, Lord, and you're an everlasting Father who's who's been there from the beginning to the end, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit you have given us, Lord Jesus, Lord, as a gift, Lord, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit you have given us, Jesus, Lord. Lord, and the peace you have given us and the joy you have given us in our lives, Lord Jesus, Lord, and of all the fruits of the Spirit you have given us, Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything you have done in our life, Lord. Every day is a blessing, Lord Jesus, Lord. Through to so many struggles, Lord. You stand by us, Lord. We say, I am with you, Lord. You're always with us, Lord Jesus, Lord. You bring us out of the darkness, Lord Jesus. You never leave us astray, Lord. As you go looking for the lost sheep, Lord, you came looking down for our work for the lost sheep who was us, Lord Jesus, Lord. You came looking down for us, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you and praise you for the love you have shown upon us, Lord Jesus, Lord. And the, um, the everlasting, um, the promise that you have given us that one day we will rise again and we will see you again, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We continue our worship and uh, this beautiful hymn, When the Spirit of the Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord is. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing a lyric song. The Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing a favorite song. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing a favorite song. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing a favorite
two o'clock we are also celebrating the day of Pentecost and uh, you are all welcome if you are in this area you are living in South Hall or in West London area so you are welcome you can join us those who are watching us through this uh, social media two o'clock we are having the celebration of uh, day of Pentecost and also we are after service we will have a celebration of the Jubilee of Queen so you are all welcome to join us on the 24th to 26th of June there will be a uh, Asian convention European Asian Christian convention so you are all welcome to come and worship with us on 24th to 26th of June this convention will be here in this church Gentlemen, please come forward. Today uh, we are celebrating the birthday of uh, Shalim as well. So before um, we will uh, pray for Shalim, I will say that we need to sing Happy Birthday to Shalim. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday Happy birthday to you. Let's pray. Loving God, Heavenly Father, you are the source of life. We give you thanks for the gift of children. Almighty God, in this time of prayer, we ask your blessing upon Shari and all the children, those who are worshipped here and uh, the different parts of the world. Please be with them and bless them. We ask your anointing and your power for our shedding. Almighty God, take control of his life. Be with him in his study and bless his parents and sister. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you are always faithful and with us. As our children, they are studying in the different places. Almighty God, we understand this is a trouble somewhere. There are so many challenges for our children. But we rely upon your strength and your wisdom. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your providence. Please accept these gifts and bless your people abundantly. And use this gift for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Please take your seats. Our first scripture reading in this uh, morning is uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 21. It's a story about the day of Pentecost and our request elder Sunil Kumar please come forward and read the scripture for us. Acts chapter 2 verse, verses 1 to 21. In the New Testament, the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 21. Reading from New Testament, the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared upon among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that? We hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Macedonia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with his eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portent, uh, portents in the heaven above, uh, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We are going to praise him, sing him. What a friend we have in Jesus. Why would you please come forward? What a friend we have in John chapter 14, 
8 to 17. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. We ask no more. Jesus answered, Have I been all this time with you, Philip, and still you do not know me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Then how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? I am not myself the source of the words I speak to you. It is the Father who dwells in me, doing his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else accept the evidence of the deeds themselves. In the truth, in, in, in the very truth I tell you, whosoever has faith in me will do what I'm doing. Indeed, he will do greater things still because I am doing it to the Father. I'm going to the Father. Anything you ask in my name, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another to be your advocate, who will be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept him, because the world neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he dwells with you and you will and he he dwells with you and will be in you. 25 to 27. I have told you these things while I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled heart at rest and banish your fears. to God bless you. I just prepare myself for the word of God and I will invite the choir to just come forward and we are going to sing this uh, in Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on. Living God for the friend. 
give you thanks, loving God, Heavenly Father, that you sent your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, lead us, guide us, inspire us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless your people. We know that we got the limited mind and limited thoughts. We rely upon your wisdom, your power. So bless us. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Please be seated. Since uh, Thursday, we are enjoying the celebration of the Jubilee of our Queen. Do you know when we are celebrating birthday or the anniversary or any other event? What is the actual reason of that celebration? What is behind that celebration? Why people are celebrating their birthday, anniversary? What is the reason? Hmm. Yes. This can be Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yes. Yes, children. This is your time. Hmm? Why do you want to celebrate your birthday or anniversary of your parents? Wedding anniversary or birthday, you are going to buy the cards, you are interested to cook the nice food. So what is the reason? Yes. Say some memory problems. Hmm? Say yes. Memory yeah, you are remembering that time. Yes, Anna? Remembrance, yes. Good? Yes? Joyful occasion. <laughs> yes? Joyful occasion. Joyful occasion, yeah. I was thinking about uh, when we are celebrating this dear Pentecost. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this dear Pentecost, people they are ignoring very badly. In our churches, in our community, in our world, people are celebrating Christmas. They believe that, oh, it's a wonderful festival. They are enjoying the sale. They are enjoying the food and the cards. They want to send the gifts. In the same way, not all of the people, I understand because I've been in ministry for the last 35 years. I know that we are struggling to celebrate uh, Good Friday and uh, Easter. Some people they are taking very light. Oh, it's okay. It's an Easter day, you know. Some people they are working on Easter day. And uh, the dear Pentecost. This is a very special day. You know, this is the day of the birthday of the church. As we are seeing, uh, greeting for Charlie in this morning. He's celebrating his birthday. His dad gave me call in this morning. Oh, we are bringing the cake and we want to celebrate the birthday of our son. It is so good. We are rejoicing for the blessing of children. But we need to understand the church is a fellowship of the believers. And we need to be together. We need to give thanks to God. And we were talking about the reason for the celebration. When we are celebrating there are churches, those who are taking very seriously. I'm not talking about the Pentecostal churches. I'm not a Pentecostal in that sense. But I'm very much charismatic and evangelical minded. And I, I strongly believe on the Trinity. God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. We believe on the Trinity. And uh, there's a third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. It's a person. When we are celebrating, the day of Pentecost, I just want to remind you the background of the day of Pentecost. It was the feast of the first fruits. The Jerusalem people were gathered together and they were celebrating that day. Pentecost means 50th day. So that was the, uh, the base upon the Exodus chapter 34, verse 22, and Deuteronomy. Chapter 16, verse 9 to 12. People after the harvest, they were bringing the first fruit of their harvest. I remember when I was uh, uh, in a village and uh, 
people, they were bringing the vegetables and the other things, you know, because they believed that, oh, uh, pastor will want to give it to you and they were bringing for the prayer and that was a, a, a expression of their thanksgiving that God is the creator and he empowered them he gave them strength to uh, bring this uh, harvest so that was the uh, uh, feast they were celebrating uh, in uh, Jerusalem that was the first fruit of uh, uh, barley harvest and other fruits and vegetables. So they were bringing that uh, into that place. When people, they were gathered together on that day, because people were coming from all over the world uh, to celebrate, you can see the heart of thanksgiving. I shared so many times that this is the beauty of the Jewish people, even there is a democracy, there is a system of the government. They are running that government under the Prime Minister. But they believe on the theocracy. That's the beauty of that nation. They believe that uh, uh, God is the almighty God and he is the ruler. So all these people, they were in Jerusalem. They were acknowledging that God is almighty God and uh, he is the creator of everything. So that day when they were together in Jerusalem and uh, uh, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that is the that is the history. Bible says that people from all over the world they were uh, at that place and they were they were praying together and they were worshiping together and they have received the Holy Spirit like a tongues of fire, purity. That is the fire mean purity. They were not burned on, but that was a that was a, a power of the Holy Spirit. As we were singing, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One in them. It's a beautiful hymn. So, they have received the Holy Spirit. And that was the fulfillment of the promise of God on the Old Testament. Because God said, I will empower you. I will send my Spirit. I will give you the Spirit. So that was the promise we just read that from, from our readings. God fulfilled His promise. And Jesus before he went to heaven, he made that promise with his disciples. As I said that we believe in the Trinity, even this word is not in the Bible, but the existence is most important, that word. So, when we are celebrating Christmas, we are remembering the first coming of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are celebrating the day of Pentecost, brothers and sisters, we are thinking about the new era, the new day, the birthday of the church. As I said that Holy Spirit is a person, the Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity. So God, the Holy Spirit came to this world, empowered the people. And the result was, they have received the power. The same disciples, those who are so frightened, fearful, they were not ready to face the Romans. You know that Peter, who was a very beloved disciple of Jesus Christ, he denied three times. He said, oh, I don't know Christ. Can you imagine that fearful person? He stood in front of the large crowd and he was talking about the birth and the crucifixion and the salvation and the righteousness of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He became the new person by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was no more living in fear. There was no fear of the Romans. There was no fear of the Jewish teachers and the law givers. He was, he was saying, oh, he is the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. He is risen from the dead. And he was talking about the judgment. That if you have crucified that Jesus, one day he will come back to judge the world. So, people, they were astonished. They were not ready to accept that message. 
but they were a large crowd. They accepted the truth because they said that the Spirit of God will come, He will set you free. And they have received the truth. 3,000 men, I'm not talking about the women and the children, because the numbers which mentioned in the book of Acts is not talking about uh, the children and the women because they were not counting the women and the children. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 men, they have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. My point is, why we should celebrate this day? You can say, oh, that was the only one event we should celebrate. Why? Why not? The Holy Spirit is a wonderful gift from God. That is the first thing. If somebody is giving you gift, they are not asking for money, gift is a gift. So you need to enjoy that gift. You can oh, no, I don't want that. When Jesus is offering such advocate, mediator, gift, you need to receive all utterly. That should be our attitude toward the Spirit of God. You know, there were people in the first century church, they were magicians, and there was big jealousy, you know, because the disciples, they were uh, performing the miracles. And they said, oh, we can use that power for the sake of materialistic things, for the money. And one of the guys, he went to the disciples and said, how oh, would you take this money and give us this power? And the disciples, they were so angry with him. Your money should perish with you. You want to see the gift of God with money. So we cannot buy Holy Spirit because it's God. Nobody can buy God. Someone said that uh, they went to India and uh, there were, you know, there were six, more than six million God and Goddess. And uh, he said they were watching on the street and uh, uh, on the idols, uh, they call it Bhagwan. So there was a sticker on that, Bhagwan is on sale. So they are, they are selling their gods and goddess. But our God is not on sale. We were on sale. Because we were in the hands of the enemy, the devil. We were naked in the, in the market. Due to our sins, we were naked. We were on sale. As a, in ancient time, people used to buy the slaves from the market. So all God is not on sale. He buy us, He is buying everyday people from the hands of devil. We need to celebrate the gift of God which He has given us. He set us free. The Spirit of God is opening our eyes if you want to understand the scripture. So you need to receive the gift of God. You need to give reverence to Him. You need to ask for that helper. He can open your minds and you will be able to understand the beauty and the mystery and the wisdom of God's Word. And the third thing is, it's a spirit of peace and harmony. You can see through the world, people are trying for peace. You can receive such peace only through the Spirit of God. This is very important. That God is revealing His promises to His people. You can know the will of God by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. What God's plan for you and for me. It's a great drawback that people, those who are living in this world, they fail to understand what is the purpose of their life? So many wise people, they are buried in the graveyard. If you go to the graveyard, you will see, oh, this is the title, Mr. So and so. He died, you know, you, you never know. They were so talented, gifted. But they failed to explore and found the gift God had given them. So the Holy Spirit is revealing His purpose and His gift to you. And not last, not least, 
you can enjoy the love of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can grow into the likeness of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we are coming to this table, I haven't got enough time to move further. But definitely, in the coming days, we will talk about the dwelling of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. That's a great burden upon my heart that we should learn about the gift of the Spirit. So definitely we'll carry on about the manifestation of these gifts and uh, um, the spirit of truth. We will learn about that. But in this morning when we are coming to this table, we need to give Him thanks for His Spirit. The free gift of God. We need to give Him praise and thanks that He has given us a wonderful gift. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with a thankful heart that you have given us the wonderful, astonishing gift, your spirit, your power, your wisdom. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people, those who fail to understand the true meaning of the person of the Holy Spirit. They may understand this mystery. They may understand your love. They may understand their purpose in their life. As we are coming to this table, we ask your blessing upon your people. Please bless this bread and this wine. Bless this table. Almighty God, give us a thankful heart. When we will come to this table, we may identify your love your wounds, your blood. Bless you people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Holy Communion. We we'll sing this in O Precious is the Flow.
to spend some time in silence and think about the blessing of this fellowship as we are remembering his love, his sacrifice, his precious blood of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us this commandment, the new commandment which he has given us. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come with these gifts to offer the praise of our lips and the service of our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we gather at this table, we remember that Jesus was born of Mary, he lived our common life on earth. He suffered and died for us. On the third day he rose again and is always present through the Holy Spirit. In his presence and the company of all the people of God, past, present and to come, we celebrate the supper of the Lord. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and open the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Here again the words of institution of this feast as they are given by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, that from the earth you caused the grain to come for the making of bread. We praise you for Christ, the bread of life, whose body was broken for us. By your Holy Spirit, sanctify us and this Lord, that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ, and that we may be made one in Him. As of old you fed your people in the wilderness, so feed us now that we may live to your praise. Loving God, in this time of prayer, we pray for all the people, those in the hospital are at home. Especially, we remember your daughter, our sister, your servant, John, as she is at home and unable to join us physically in this place of worship. Loving God, we pray for joy. Almighty God, please give her perfect health. We pray for all the other people, those in the hospital. Heavenly Father, we ask your healing power for them. We pray for our children and our loved ones. We pray for Persecuted Church, Heavenly Father, be with your people and bless them. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, honored be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and be done on earth. Give us this day our day, and forgive the blessings, and the blood that is against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take it, this is which is shed for you or for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We will retain the cup and the bread and we will drink and eat together and request and receive. Please come forward.
is the body of Christ given for you. Eat this and give him thanks. The blood of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ. Drink this and give him thanks. service, Lord, the hand that have taken holy things, may the ear that have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the eyes that have seen your great love shine with the light of hope. May the feet that have walked in your house ever walk in the light. May the bodies that have placed your loving living body, be restored to newness of life. Thanks be to God for his gift beyond words. Amen. We continue our worship. Last hymn is Rest and Obey. Men will walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, His beautiful legs. When you walk with the Lord, you will be on the screen. Let's sing together. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, but it's no other way to be happy. Trust and obey
like to share the views together. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen.